just gonna wait for some people to come in. Let's see. Let's see. Just gonna wait a little bit before I start, just to give people a chance to come in. Hello to everyone who's already here. Um, let's see. Awesome. So, uh, for those of you who are joining, my name's Yvette. I'm gonna show you how I uh, end up building my songs. Hi, Helene. Um, you'll have to excuse the background noise. I have a ton of hens and uh, different, different birds outside. So if you hear chickens over my playing, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> um, cool. Let's see, I'm gonna give another minute or so and then I'm gonna start. Thank you to everyone who's joining. This is so cool. Um, I hope, uh, I hope, I'm going to be writing some stuff on this whiteboard and I hope it's not flipped. Um, it looks flipped on my camera currently, but I hope the final product reverses it back. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, I guess people will have to like visually flip it. <laughs> cool. I think, uh, I think I'm going to get going because I have a lot to cover. <laughs> so thank you to everyone who's joining. Um, oh, sorry it's flipped. I guess I should have thought about having a, a visual portion. But yeah, I guess keep in mind that everything I'm writing is going to go the other way. <laughs> okay, so um, my name is Yvette. I play in a band called Covet, and I love writing music. I love playing guitar, but I think um, more than playing guitar, I actually enjoy writing songs and composing. So that's why I thought it was fitting to do my workshop on songwriting and how I end up, um, I guess, starting with a riff and building it out into a full song. I know um, I have this whiteboard here today because I was going to show you guys how I end up keep, keeping organized with the riffs I'm writing and how I end up being deliberate with my time because my time is precious. I don't have a lot of it. So I always want to make sure when I'm sitting down to write, I'm writing the most efficiently and I found that having a whiteboard and keeping track of parts really helps me have a lot of intention when I write and helps me almost like keep an outline of my song um, so it's easy to reference as well so uh, yeah I guess the funny thing is creativity is so difficult to master I feel like nobody can really master the process it kind of just strikes or doesn't and um, one thing I don't like about it is like when I'm traveling and I'm feeling inspired, like when I'm driving or when I'm like in another place, I don't always have the luxury to have my entire rig. And um, sometimes I feel like having a cool tone or something is almost essential to feeling inspired. It's almost like having um, a bunch of different colors to play with in addition to just like, you know, a black and white drawing. So for me, what I love about having the Tonewood amp um, shout out to Tonewood for having me. What I love about having the amp is like it's like this little built-in uh, color palette pretty much. You have like a bunch of different effects on it. Of course delay, um, reverb, uh, chorus, all of these things that I use a lot and I feel like um, it's just really inspiring having that with me. The fact that it's portable really rules. So I've definitely really appreciated using it on the road and when I'm traveling. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and dive into the song. Um, so I have a song called Parachute. Uh, it was actually inspired by a guitar tone. I find that it happens a lot. Um, tones kind of make me write differently. I feel like if just left to my own devices, I tend to be very melodically verbose in that like, I just want to clutter every moment with like um, a melody. <laughs> so, but I feel like having things like delay, reverb, fuzz, in this case chorus, it makes me kind of chill out and really let the tone fill out some of the sound rather than my notes. And um, uh, so yeah, I, let me just go ahead and plug in. Um, let's see. I'm just 
going to dial in a, a chorus sound here. Okay, starting on. Um, I trust everyone can hear that okay. Uh, so yeah, this, this chorus sound that was built in um, ended up really inspiring a melody, and that was... ended up really enjoying that and I felt like it kind of had the potential to be part of a bigger picture. That's uh, the case with a lot of my riffs is I ended up writing riffs because I'm inspired by certain tones and I'm like oh, okay like I don't think I should just be like a demo or something like I want to I think it deserves to be contextualized in, in a bigger picture so yeah I guess um, with this riff um, I wanted to make it into a full song and then I guess step one for me would be to figure out if my songs are like full of stories, I guess my riffs are like different chapters and different parts of the story. And it was up to me to figure out um, how, I guess where, where that riff belongs in the context of it. Is it like an introduction? Is it um, an exposition? Is it a climax? Is it a conclusion? So um, oftentimes when I'm sitting down to try to turn a riff into a full song, that's what I think about is, what does it sound like? What part of the story am I telling? So yeah, that to me, it sounds like it could be the intro. It could even be like a, a transition section. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and assign that riff letter A on my whiteboard. Um, I know it's it's flipped for you guys, so uh, my apologies in advance. Um, so yeah, a I guess sometimes I, I'm I'm lucky in this case, and that I'm starting from the beginning. But oftentimes I have riffs, and they end up being like the climax. So I end up having to build from the middle out, or even sometimes it's like the ending of the song, and I have to work backwards. So, but for the sake of convenience, and because I got lucky, I'm gonna work chronologically today. So we're starting with a. Um, Okay, so when I write, I actually, um, I wanted to make a note that I'm in an alternate tuning right now. I'm in F, A, C, G, C, E. I got it from a band called American Football. They roll. Um, so this tuning is one of my favorites. I use it a ton. Um, I find that using a, an alternate tuning, it makes certain shapes convenient, but also to use the color analogy like I use for effects, um, I find that it's like working with a, a layer of pre-washed color on a canvas. It's like you already have like a mood there. And what it also does is it makes it so that I can't use familiar shapes in standard and I have to write the melody that naturally wants to come out using my voice rather than letting convenience or comfort dictate what I put out. So I really enjoy writing this way because it's like the way I write is very lyrical as you'll see, like I'm gonna be singing a lot. It's gonna sound really goofy, bear with me. But that's actually how I figure out my guitar melodies a lot. So yeah, the next part, it needs a B section, I think. So we have A. Um, I heard like da na 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 da 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 na 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 na. I heard like this like call and response thing. So I knew like I wanted this thing like kind of gritty, more of like moody than the contrast with that light section. So so I was like, okay, what about like. Let's just call that B. I really liked that. So there's gonna be a B after A. I don't know how many times B is gonna happen, so let's let's try to figure it out. So I'm gonna do something different the second time. So I think it could repeat twice there, and then so let's do B1, B2. And then um, I think it needs like a little transition section to break that up and then I can go ahead and repeat that again. So I, I, I immediately heard um, Again, I'm gonna be singing a lot because that's actually how I write is I sing stuff and then I figure it out on the fretboard. So um, 
Let's try that. Uh... I definitely think B can come back there, but I don't want it to do the same thing. I think it's getting old. So I'm gonna, um, right now the melodic motion is up. So it's like, da, 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 da. so what if I flipped it? I inverted it to make it go down. So maybe like. I like that. So now I'm gonna have B and then I'm gonna put a T for like a transition. And then I'm gonna have B1 and B2 come back again. I think it could repeat. So let's see what we have so far. Okay, so. That's A. Okay, that goes really great into A. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that. So I'm gonna have this whole bracket go twice. I know this this is starting to look like a math equation, but this is literally how I write. It just like I have all these messy, cluttered thoughts in my head, and I need like a visual way to organize it, or else it'll just be floating out in the ether, and I won't be able to like finish it. So here we go. This goes twice. So um. I'm just gonna, for the sake of time, skip the re repetitiveness and go into B because I do think we need a C section. So right now, I feel like we've exhausted the A and the B theme and um, it needs, okay, I think it should have a climax soon. We've told the intro, we've had some development. Um, I think there could be a climax, but I don't think I should jump into it yet. I think it needs like something to build suspense. And one of my favorite ways to build suspense is to just repeat something, but maybe like tonally add some variation and build on it dynamically. So have um, something, you vamp something and classical music is called an ostinato. Um, so yeah, I think uh, we should have like an ostinato part. And um, let's see what should come after. I'm gonna sing. <laughs> something like something like that um so let's see maybe like let's see how that flows so. So I'm gonna like include more root notes. I'm even thinking like maybe tonally, I'm gonna add some gain or something. Um, I always, when I build stuff up, I also love to add an octave pedal. I don't have that, unfortunately. But yeah, let's let's have the C section. I think the C section can happen um, four times. I really like four. It's a nice even balance number. Good for poppier music. So. Um, We've built it up dynamically. I can get to the climax. So for this section, I've re I repeated like a theme a lot. I think it's time for like almost like a soloy section. 
One problem I have is, okay, obviously I'm writing, I'm not really writing on the spot right now. Like I've written this song and I'm just demonstrating my thought process and dissecting things and building them up. But sometimes I do run into the problem of like, I want to write something complex, but I don't know really where to start. And I find that when it's easier to start simple and build up than it is to have like these grandiose ideas. And then you're like, I don't even know how it fits in the context of things. Mm -hmm. So, um, Next part, I remember I just knew what progression I wanted. I liked this chord progression. So yeah, so I like that progression, but I wanna build on it, right? Um, Cause right now it kind of sounds like a more rhythmic, rhythm guitar part. I want it to be lead. So um, let's see what I can add to it. Maybe like a little ornament. I like that. That original chord progression is still there. I'm just adding more details and building on it. So the, the backbone is intact, that progression, it just sounds complicated. But it's really just a bunch of chords. I remember I really heard, ba -na -ba -ba -ba. I can't sing that high, I'm gonna spare you. I'm gonna spare your windows. <laughs> da -na 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 -na, da -na -da -da -da. So. Let's try that. Um, but I'm just making it broken. So yeah, everything is chords. <laughs> Let's try that. I added that little pull out thing to repeat it. D section. So D is like kind of like the guitar solo part. It's fun. It repeats twice, right? D um, times two. <laughs> this totally looks like an algebra equation. It's cracking me up. <laughs> but I guess it's like my language and I'm trying to like teach you guys my language. Okay, so uh, I thought this would be the climax, but I definitely think it could get bigger. And one of the things I really enjoyed about when I was jamming out on that progression I like how big and full that sounded, and I think it could use something like that. Um, so, uh, let's see. I'm, I'm going to choose some chords. Uh, da -da 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 -da. because they're in the same family as the ones I used before. So. so I like that. I'm going to just tentatively put like an E section here. The E section is going to be, I guess those chords will be the main theme of the E section. So I remember when I was writing this part, I was like, okay, it's like the, it's like a double climax, right? The climax, we had one climax. Now, uh, that was like a fake pre-climax, this is the real climax. Um, I wanted to sound like a section with like a bunch of rolling waves. Like I thought how epic the ocean is and I was like, oh, waves crash. So these chords kind of sound like crash. I know I sound probably crazy right now. Like I think a lot of my songwriting process, as you can see, is very visual. And I'm always thinking like, what is in the story? What is happening? And I saw waves, so. <laughs> Waves don't only crash though, they come in sets and they're like very fluid and rolling. So I was like, what if I did like um, kind of more chilled out melodic section after that? So I like that. Um, kind of 
of sounds like a call and response thing like I was doing earlier. Uh, and I feel like this section, um, I don't want to repeat the same thing four times. I do want to add some surprises, otherwise it becomes too predictable. I'm always thinking about um, contrast. I think that's one of the main themes that I think about. I feel like a lot of compelling songs involve a lot of contrast, be it dynamically, tonally, melodically, um, the voicings that you choose. I like surprises. Um, I also, that's not to say that good songwriting is limited to contrast. Like there's certain people I can think of, like the guy from Sun Kill Moon, um, he he can take one riff and just repeat it forever. And the, and the contrast happens with his storytelling, like in the lyrics. But for me right now, I just have a guitar, so I kind of want to vary it up a bit, so. <laughs> can change the melody there. Um. So I have E1 and then E2, which has some variation. What's going to happen E3? Let's see. I think it's time to throw in a surprise chord. It's getting predictable. So. and moody just like a storm mm, I think I also want to throw in a rhythmic curve ball so I'm going to break up the feel of that right now it's super flowy but I almost want like I feel like in a storm maybe the waves get a little choppy so so um So throw in some harmonics because I feel like it's like really dense right now with chords and harmonics almost sound like a flash of lightning. Again, I'm talking about this very visually because I'm trying to tell a story with melody. <laughs> That's like all of my songwriting pretty much. So let's see. Uh... came in so I think this whole section I'm gonna put brackets on it math equation vibes uh, it can happen two times again so um, we could end on this climax but I feel like it kind of leaves things unresolved it's like all intense sometimes I do choose to uh, leave it at an intense moment just to build up build up build up and then just take that away and just have the silence be landing but in this case, I think it does need some kind of resolution, right? We're in a storm right now. Things are intense, but I'd like things to calm down. So, um... I think uh, I need to build up to that ending though. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna tack on like a little bit of an extra ending maybe. So uh, I like... <laughs> Maybe have it keep on repeating, but like vary it up again. <laughs> Melodic ornament. <laughs> Tap ornament. Uh, I like that. That. Having a little moment. <laughs> tension chord in again. So right now I brought in that E E theme again, but I'm just gonna call it like E transition because it's not really that full part. It's just like 
that the cord section, but uh, a little bit variation each time. And so it needs like an F part, I think. So I'm at the ending right now. What could F be? So I think I really like uh, one way to like calm things down is to just have um, something that repeats again, something kind of meditative. So like maybe like a. Uh, <laughs> Something that maybe sounds like ba da 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 ba da 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 da. Maybe I could do something with looping later, add in some like counter melody. But for now, uh, maybe like. some harmonics I feel like harmonics kind of sound hopeful because they're like a ray of light like earlier they're served as by thunder but now I feel like it's gonna like maybe like a ray of hope poking out through clouds so so yeah um I think that's a good ending. Maybe like, uh... This ending on that chord, that sounds like the chord of resolution. <laughs> so there you have it. I, this complicated thing that looks like some weird messed up algebraic formula is actually just my song map and every little part is in there and I even notate how many times it repeats and working this way has really helped me finish songs because sometimes I feel like I have a bunch of parts floating around but I'm not sure how to connect them so that way every day I look at this and I'm like okay if there's certain parts that I'm missing I can just work on filling those parts in uh, so I guess the next part of my writing process is I usually start with um, just the guitar melodies like vocals are they're not an afterthought but I feel like I'm a guitarist and I'd rather just build the song around the guitar and then have vocals be something that complement it right because the way I write my guitar parts is already so lyrical it's kind of like how a vocalist would figure out their lines so I definitely heard room when I was writing this song for vocals um, namely in the beginning part because it's so uh, repeat repetitive right and this isn't always the way it works. Sometimes vocal melodies will inspire guitar parts and I end up building a guitar around the um, vocal line I write. But in this case, um, when I do write vocals, it's like da na 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 That's kind of how I work, work out my vocals is I just sing there and Hum. Sometimes I even say nonsense words, but um, let's see. I don't even know what I'm going to say yet. I figure out the melodies first, and then I thought about what the overall song sounds like. A lot of times I do want my lyrics to kind of um, be enhanced by the melody. Like, I want the overall story to be, um, to kind of parallel how the song sounds. So, um, Overall, the song, right, it starts out kind of optimistic and hopeful, gets to a stormy section, and then it resolves. I think that's the, um, the movement of the song. And I feel like it would be cool if the lyrics kind of were like, maybe something optimistic, but then things get tense, and then um, there's some sort of resolution. And at the time, I was uh, definitely going through some rough stuff, and I thought, oh man, like, uh, rough stuff with people. And I was like, okay, what about if the song's about like, um, parting ways with a person and then uh, having it be uncertain because you're so used to having a person around, but then things are okay because you're good and offended and you don't need anyone. So <laughs> um, the lyrics end up being, you and I, oh, I should mention, um, but I don't want to waste some, I remember those words just jumped out to me when I was writing. Um, So I kind of built this whole section around over uh, around those last words. So you and I were standing outside the house where this all started. Love was not enough, but I know we'd make it through. But you don't have to believe me, and you don't have to say you will. These days are far and few between. So 
I ended up referencing days as to what I don't want to waste. So yeah, I ended up writing that section. And then I was like, okay, I don't think the lyrics should go through the whole song. Like, definitely that part needed something extra there. But um, they should definitely come back. It'd be kind of weird for to just have lyrics in the beginning and then not revisit it. So um, this theme, the A and the B part, it happens twice, right? I've notated that. So I thought the second, I, I play in a band. So there's like opportunities for other instruments to fill in space. I don't want to just be a space hog and take up everything. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna have the lyrics happen once. This part's gonna repeat, but I'm gonna do like, maybe like a second guitar part or maybe my bass player can do something cool and the drum can be the variation. Um, one thing that really changed for me writing with the band was before I thought I had to feel in like every moment, but now I feel like I can actually lay back and, and be okay with having something be repetitive or leaving a little bit of extra space so that my bandmates can fill it in. So, um, the next part I chose to have lyrics come in was the repetitive C section that's kind of like um, one big crescendo, right? Um, and I thought it'd be cool if this section wasn't like a vocal line that was moving with the melody. This part's like very repetitive, like a mantra. So I thought, oh, it'd be cool if the lyrics were like telling yourself something. So the lyrics then become, someday you'll realize you don't need it anymore. So it's like... I remember I did some oohs and ahs first, like... into that little lead guitar section so yeah that's where I just drew the line at lyrics I was like enough I think this song has enough um, melodic movement and whatever else needs to be filled in I want to do with other instruments so there you have it there's my writing process for how I start with a riff build it into a song and then add lyrics um, and I and I will say some people find it hard to like play and sing at the same time um, I find that learning my guitar parts and committing them to muscle memory is the best way to be able to sing while you play because then you don't have to think about your hand your hands just muscle memory at that point and then you're just singing you're just thinking about intonation um, phrasing pitch just the vocals I find it more difficult to sing than I do to play guitar so I'm always wanting to focus on the vocal part of it so a lot of people think like singing and playing is doing two things at the same time but it really is is just getting one thing to be automatic and then getting the vocals to kind of be the thing that you're thinking about so you're not thinking about two things you're just thinking about one and the other is just autopilot so um, yeah I, I guess I'm around halfway right now a little less than halfway uh, I was wondering if anyone had any specific questions for me. It can be about anything. Um, it can even be about like being a touring musician, even though that's kind of irrelevant at this point. <laughs> Just kidding, touring's coming back. Um, but yeah, if anyone has anything they wanna chime in on, if anyone has questions about this process, um, I, can, uh, I can definitely go through the comments and, and answer. Um, oh, thanks, Tommy. I saw a really nice, a really nice comment about how um, band members compliment each other. I will say that like that's definitely a development that happened with time. Like I said earlier, I was I used to just think as like a solo guitar player, and I definitely wasn't really considering what else could be happening. I was like, I have to sound really full by myself. I have to take up every moment. There can be no room to breathe. But then now I feel like writing in a band. I it's great because I can chill out certain sections and I really enjoy actually giving opportunities to highlight my my band members because they're also talented 
Um, and I feel like they should have a chance to go off on a solo too. So sometimes I'm okay just staying on a droney chord while my drummer goes into a drum solo. Or there's certain parts where the bass almost becomes the lead guitar and that's like the, the melody that drives through certain sections. Um, let's see, do I power through and complete songs in one sitting? No, I, I, I have done that before, but it's so rare. I feel like more often than not, um, songs take place over a couple of weeks, maybe a month or so, a couple, I've had a few take a couple of months. And um, the only way I'm able to keep track of it is actually by writing down the, the um, I give my riffs names, so sometimes I'm like, okay, like a uh, crazy fuzz riff or something, and I'm like, Okay, Crazy Fuzz Riff needs to be fleshed out into a song, and then I map it out, and if I'm missing any sections, I can return to those sections um, much later and, and use my time to finish it. Um, and I record everything, like, obsessively, um, either through a DAW, but I actually prefer video, because then I remember how to play it, I have a visual reference. Sometimes, unfortunately, on guitar, unlike piano, there's, like, a bunch of different ways you can play something, because there's different positions, so... Um, having a video reference definitely helps. Um, what's the one thing I struggle with most as a songwriter? Uh, I feel like <laughs> it's funny, but it's definitely lyrics. Um, there's something really, this is just my opinion, like shout out to all you lyricists out there, much respect. Uh, I find that once I put words to something, it, it almost becomes too vulnerable for me. I'm like, uh, I don't want to sound like a cliche. I don't want to sound pretentious. Um, I want to be, I would like to be relatable, hopefully. So it just, all these parameters that I put myself in and I, I feel like I get it, a lot of anxiety putting myself out there with words. Um, I guess that's the same reason why I really enjoy like abstract art. Cause it's like when you don't have something dictating the, uh, the narrative or d dictating the, the, uh, subject of the song, right? in this case a painting um when it's just a bunch of shapes and forms that are nebulous uh it kind of tells a story i guess you can kind of fill in the story right someone can look at a painting and be like oh i see this but what someone else sees might be completely different and i feel the same way with like music that's just instrumental is i love how it can transport someone one place and they can transport someone else entirely somewhere else uh and um, I feel like as a songwriter, I feel the most successful when my intention translates. Like, um, I wrote a song once which I wanted to sound like feeling conflicted, like ambivalent almost. And then I remember someone came up to me after the show and was like, hey, that third song you played sounded really like, like a conflict, like inner turmoil. It sounded really, he used the word ambivalent and I was really stoked because that was what I was aiming for, even though the song didn't have lyrics, so. Yeah, I find words to be very challenging. Um, if you have your favorite lyricists out there, throw them in the comment section. I would love to check them out. Um, definitely, because you could use more inspiration in that realm. Uh, let me see. Let me see what else I've been missing. Um, I haven't studied uh, Joseph. Uh, I haven't studied the study of counterpoint, but I've um, explored that concept a lot playing Baroque music. I started on classical, so I played all of, pretty much all of Bach, and there's uh, uh, some Scarlatti too, and there's definitely a lot of uh, crazy counterpoint stuff going on. It blows my mind how those composers are able to write like so many voices at once. Um, definitely inspires some of my own playing as well. Uh, What's a good tuning you like that's not too similar to FACGA to change things up? Uh, one tuning that always makes me go moody for some reason, like I'm writing in major a lot, I'm just, I guess, a very melodically optimistic person, but I find that using D, A, D, uh, D, A, C sharp, F sharp, A, E, it's like a very moody chord, and it kind of makes stuff more gloomy. And then I also find that if you are writing things that sound too similar, try throwing on, um, a pedal that kind of sounds different. Uh, I know that when I turn on fuzz, for some reason, it's like I transform into this like really moody, sassy person. So sometimes when I feel like I'm in a rut and I'm making stuff that sounds too samey, throw on a fuzz and then I'm just a different person. <laughs> Let's see, that's a great question by the way. Um, 
did I develop some of my writing techniques from my classical background? So I would say that this actually comes more from my my uh, my love for writing. Uh, I used to, I wasn't really like a math person, even though I did okay. I feel like my passion was really in writing essays and, and writing and creative writing, even like telling stories, poetry. And I felt like um, there was something just really satisfying about uh making a point and then explaining it so that like so that people understand what you're saying I guess I think language is really fascinating so for me this form of notating a song is almost like creating an outline for my thoughts like okay the story I want to tell is um let's say hypothetically it's like two kids running away getting lost in the forest and then they um find home or something and I feel like okay what what can I, how can I structure my outline so that every part of that story is told? Um, let's see, show the lyrics. Aw, <laughs> thank you, that's really nice. Um, lyrics are very hard. Uh, admittedly, I feel like, I, I, I think I shy away from them just because I find them to be so challenging. And um, for those of you out there who write lyrics, I'm, as I said earlier, I, I really have a lot of respect for you. Um, I find it to be the hardest part of the process. How do I finalize the topic of my song? Um, that's a good question. How do I pick the topic of a song? Sometimes I sit there and um, I, I play something and I kind of just let it, like a riff. A riff will just happen sometimes out of nowhere. Like... <laughs> So that, um, to me, it's like in three, it's like one, da, 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 I find that things that are um, in three kind of remind me of a lullaby. They, they lull me to sleep. So that song, the theme of it became like a love song or a lullaby to someone who's trying to sleep. Um, so a lot of times, I guess, like the, the way the melody makes me feel ends up being the topic of what I'm writing. Um, it's kind of a fun challenge is like when I'm when I need like inspiration or something I guess I think about a mood I'm trying to capture I think I'm I think about a place I'm trying to capture I think about the essential components of what makes up that mood or that place and then I try to use melody to to capture that um, and it's really interesting to see how sometimes what you feel might be melancholy or what you feel might be hopeful ends up being the same thing to someone else that's like a concept that I'm just blown away by all the time. Um, oh, Matthew, I'm so sorry to hear about your, your injuries. Uh, that must be really difficult. I know that uh, I recently went through a bit of a, it wasn't an injury, it was more like, I guess, a, a medical condition. And it was really depressing not being able to pick up my guitar and write. And um, it was during that time where I realized, oh my gosh, I'm never going to take health for granted ever again. It's like, if you wake up every day and you don't have health problems, you are so lucky. Um, so I really hope that you pull through your injuries. I hope that time will heal it. And I hope you're able to do what you love soon. What album am I bumping right now? Ooh, uh, <laughs> I've been listening to, you know, what's funny is I've been revisiting a lot of like Van Halen <laughs> records <laughs> because, um, well, of course, he passed. Eddie Van Halen passed recently, but I feel like I'm really inspired by like just the the party energy of their music, and I kind of want to channel that for the next record. Um, and I guess uh, what else? I really enjoy. Wow, I've actually I haven't really listened to a lot of new music recently. I've been kind of slacking on that just because I've been writing so much. Um, I guess. Oh, um, Lamelda. There's this girl named Lamelda, and she writes really, really beautiful folk music. Um, and just her voice just makes me tear up all the time. And I feel like her guitar playing is it sounds so um, frail. Sounds like a negative thing. It just sounds really vulnerable, and it just like I don't know. It makes me feel a lot of stuff. I've been jamming a lot of Pine Grove as well. I love that band. Um, I've also been listening to um, a lot of synthwave, oddly enough, like Carpenter Brett and uh, Gunship. Um, Brother Tiger just put out a bunch of really great music. It's very like 80s uh, reminiscent stuff, very um, 
danceable and I, I've been jamming that a lot when I've been jogging. Um, Raphael says, uh, can you be melodic as a bass player? Absolutely. There's a band that I recommend if you want to hear the most melodic bass playing ever. Um, they're called Town Portal. They're kind of more like proggy, grungy, almost. Um, and their bass player is my favorite because he has really great tone and also his bass parts end up sounding almost like a second guitar part. And the way the band moves as a unit is they all weave in and out of like very complex time signatures. And it's really, I guess, it's pleasant to listen to as a non-musician, but as a musician who um, sometimes can be a little analytical about stuff, it, it's pretty impressive what they're able to do. Um, and it sounds so effortless and seamless. I know they just put out some new music too during quarantine, so Time Portal if you wanna to listen to a really melodic bass player. Um, do you ever record or have a specific guitar line for a specific guitar based on its tone? Yes, I do. I have uh, I have one one riff that's like Um that I feel like it it could sound good on a strap, but I love the twang of a telly and I'm really thinking about how a telly pickups sound. So, definitely going to reserve that for a telecaster. Um how do I understand the threat, the fretboard in terms of theory, um, what do I think of when I module? I don't even know what that word means, module modes. Um, so the short answer to that is, I guess, um, theory in it informs me as, as much as, um, I guess, what it did for me ear training wise. Like I did study classical piano theory and I learned um, different substitutions and inversions and, and um, things like that, counterpoint, as we mentioned earlier, but I don't really find myself thinking in terms of theory. I, as you saw my writing process earlier, it was largely like me just singing stuff, but I feel like my ability to just directly translate that onto the fretboard is, has a large part to do with um, ear training. And that happens when you just um, listen to a whole ton of music and you try to learn it. So I feel like that's what theory helps me with the most. And that's actually the most I really think about. Sometimes when I dissect my time signatures, also I'm thinking theoretically. Um, and that's only so that I can explain it to the rest of my bandmates. Um, but when I'm writing, I'm not particularly thinking of any um, mode or any time signature uh, specifically. It kind of just naturally happens. I actually have a problem where it's hard for me to stay in four because I do listen to so much like free form compound meter stuff that it's like almost normalized as part of my vocabulary so sometimes I'll think something's grooving and I'm like oh this is in four and then I go back and I dissect it and I'm like wait a minute this is like a syncopated uh I don't know five riff or something or this there's like a cool like polyrhythm thing going on um or maybe this is something actually that it's in four for a couple of bars and there's a bar of three and I don't even know um ultimately my goal is flow though like in everything I write, I want it to sound like it flows really organically. Ah, uh, cool. I am approaching the end of uh, this whole workshop. Let me see if there's any questions I missed. Uh, I appreciate all the all the love and support. Everyone's so kind. Um, how do we avoid? Okay, Arthur asks, how do you avoid sounding like another artist or another song you wrote before? I guess I put like restrictions on myself sometimes. Like um, last record I did something very, uh, I feel like it was, I used a lot of chorus. Um, I have, I tapped a lot in the past, but this new record, I feel like I really wanna start introducing different textures like um, like fuzz pedal. I didn't use fuzz at all. I, I kind of want some songs to have more overdrive. So I've been using more overdrive octave pedals. I just got an OC5 I'm really stoked on um, and like fuzz and stuff like that so that it kind of challenges me to put on a different voice. Like I mentioned way in the beginning of this, um, I feel like pedals and tones are like colors and colors if you have like a red marker you might be inclined to draw something different than if you just had a black marker. So I'm using a lot of different colored markers is what I'm getting at. <laughs> um, Let's see what else. Oh, and also I want to mention sometimes I take things from other artists, uh, concepts that I really like, 
um, and I try to recontextualize them into guitar. So I've been listening to a, um, a bit of electronic music, a bit of like almost like house <laughs> dance stuff um, when I'm running and I, I feel like there was this one section that I was like, oh, I love how it syncopates over this like 4-4 four, four part um, and I really liked um, just the feel of it, but I was like how it would be really fun to try to translate that electronic motif onto a guitar and I ended up writing something um, like, I think it's like... like very poppy but I was like hey I put it on a guitar riff that was really fun so that was a kind of a lesson in ear training but also like um, it was a challenge for myself to apply a rhythmic thing that I really enjoyed and um, recontextualize it into something that I write so it's like clever theft I guess so that's how that's another way to vary things up um, another way you can stop sounding like yourself and and push yourself to be different is to jam with people who don't sound like you um, and jam with people who have a different voice than you. I feel like I love writing to music that I don't listen to a lot because I'm like, okay, it forces me to really use my ear and and figure out how I can enhance what they're playing instead of just, again, fall into my comfort zone. Um, do I ever write anything on a nylon string classical guitar? That's a great question. I have one right behind me. I don't know if you can see it. Ah, can you see it? You can kind of see the headstock, maybe. There it is. Um, I just went to Brazil, and my goal was to pick up a really beautiful sounding nylon string. Um, and I definitely plan to record on it a lot because I love the timbre of it. It's so warm. Um, so yes, that is my answer to that. Um, I'm really glad some of you are going to come to our tour dates. Uh, I'm going on tour in a week or so, maybe a couple weeks. I'm really excited. It's going to be my first time out in a really long time. So um, we'll see what it's like. I hope it's going to be safe. Um, and thank you to those who are, are coming out. I really appreciate that. Uh, so I guess right now, um, oh, any plans for that banjo? It's on the wall. I used it in an old recording. Um, definitely, I think, I'm not a great banjo player, but I enjoy the timbre and I can at least write like a basic melodic line on it. So I think on the next acoustic album that I'm currently writing and working on, I'm gonna find a room for that banjo. And a harp. I have a harp that I never use and I, I think I like the timbre of that too. So I'm gonna try to find a way to use it texturally. Um, again, I appreciate, oh, another solo tour? Not yet. Um, Aaron, I think I remember you. I think, did you come up and say hi? I'm not sure. It's, it's been forever ago, but um, I'm hoping to hopefully get enough new music um, to do a solo tour. Maybe I'll even play some piano stuff for that. Um, we'll see. Um, thank you so much, Dawn. That's really nice that you came back and watched this lesson. Um, Okay, so I'm nearing the end. I don't want to go over the time that I'm allowed, but uh, I just wanted to tell you guys thank you so much for tuning in. I hope watching this process, I know it seems kind of complex and, and weird on a whiteboard, but I hope you find that it helps you stay organized with your writing and maybe it'll help you finish some riffs that need finishing or help you um, complete songs that you're just stuck on. Um, and yeah, I guess stay safe, be healthy. Much thank you to Tonewood for having me again. Um, and again, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm just really stoked on having one because I feel like it's such an easy way to bring around different tones with you without having to set up an amp and um, set up like a whole pedal board and everything. And uh, I find that it's so easy to travel with. And as someone who just needs to uh, strike the iron well, it's hot, creatively speaking. Uh, it's come in total clutch um, so many times just um, when I needed to like fit right with a certain tone, I could have it just like within arm's reach. So yeah, really great product. I'm stoked on mine. I've been using it for this, this whole demo. So thank you so much. You guys take care and uh, hopefully I'll see you at a show or something. <laughs>
Rock on.